Now, what was going on around the other parts of the world during that time? Um, as I had said in the last lecture or in the last recording, there the old certainties, the old world order of the feudal society, of the church having a complete rule, uh, and the new attitudes that is a uh, that is a, that is the aspirations of the people of the lower class or the social mobility the they were the primary uh, uh, sections of interest but these two conflicting and these two opposite ideas of the world existed side by side it is important to remember uh, however that life is always more complex than any system of thought and the aim of this particular lecture will be to focus on these main opposite ideas on the main opposite ideas that will help us to explain the wife of uh, explain the uh, changes or explain the attitudes that we can find in the prologue and the tale so these old and new attitudes uh, will be referred to as the medieval that is the old will be standing for the medieval and the new will be standing for the modern respectively now what was this old view of the world how was this medieval view of the world constructed in the medieval view of the world every creature and thing had a purpose and a preordained place that is you had come you have come to this world with a purpose and your place in the world has been is predetermined now the this this particular view leaves no gap for any kind of social mobility as you can understand because if you have a predetermined job or predetermined purpose in this world then you will always be stuck within the circle of that purpose and never be allowed or never even think of crossing that circle now the the cause of all purpose and order was god he presided or he ruled over a spiritual uh, spiritual edifice he ruled over the spiritualities through his priests on the earth the pope primarily and all religious matters were under the authority of the roman church god also presided over a secular uh, the secular side of the society through the king on the earth whose family was originally chosen and anointed and who therefore held a divine right to rule over all the other members of the society this is of course a very simple picture simplified picture of medieval thought but the main point is clear and that is that the authority of pope and the king and the two hierarchical structures they control that is the uh, that is the uh, pope uh, ruling over all the religious matters and the king over all the social matters uh, they can they control them and they could not be their matters or their ruling their orders can could not be questioned a consequence of seeing a result of seeing every person fitted into a rigid social structure was that individuals were not seen as important private hopes and uh, despairs and sadness and failures were thought to be insignificant in comparison to the grand order in which the god and the king ruled unquestionably it can be very difficult for a modern student as student as a scholar of the 21st century to understand how trivial an individual's feelings how futile or useless an individual's feelings were in the medieval world modern thought pays attention to the individual as was heralded or as was called upon also by the romantic uh, poets of of, of europe uh, as words worth writing for the common tongue in the common tongue for every individual of the society uh, and his he modern thought pays attention to the individual his romantic his romantic ecstasy his imaginative powers and why he would want and and his melancholy his despairs and a very good example of this already exists in another of chaucer's work and that is troilus and crusade
Troilus and Crusade, um, they were. Now, in, in the story of Troilus and Crusade, Troilus is. Uh, uh, the, the occurs the story of the story of Trilus's tragic passion is over. Uh, you can find near the end of this work, you find in the in the story towards the end of this work that Trilus's passion or tragic passion is over, is done with, and when he dies, his perspective or his point of view on life changes completely, and his soul sees the world from the medieval point of view. For the first time, Troilus rises to the stars where he hears sounds full of heavenish melody. Now, this particular point of view that is viewing the world in a medieval order, in literature, one consequence of this, uh, of this rigid kind of a view of the world was due to in literature this was used in order to show a development of characters people were not eccentric or very unique individuals as you can find among the characters of a charles dickens or d h lawrence for example instead they were described as types as social types as 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 being limited to a set of principles and behavior that were very conventional of all among, uh, and they were very homogeneous or equal to all of the behaviors of all of the other people there was no individualistic quality amongst themselves they were described as types and often they had some particular moral significance an enormously fat man with glittering eyes for example would represent the sin of gluttony or the character of peers in uh, william langland's peers the plowman stands for honesty and hard work characters like these who show little individuality and whose importance is in the sins or virtues they represent are called allegorical chaucer's audience would recognize the stock figures from the way they were described Chaucer often drew on this, on this source of stock figures and characters, or although as we will see, his character's individuality develops far beyond the limits of contemporary conventions. It develops as we, as scholars in the modern time, so we learn to see these allegories as symbols of development, and therefore so much of studies have occurred regarding Chaucer's work, even though we can very firmly say that the sources of these characters were very much typical and very much conventional stock characters or stock characters uh, that existed during the time of Chaucer. More complicated and precise definitions of character could be drawn uh, from, 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 the stud, from his uh, usage of astrology. And Chaucer uh, refers to astrology frequently in the Canterbury Tales and uh, we will discuss the wife of Bath's horoscope in some detail uh, when we, when we uh, analyze the text. A second ready-made system for analyzing characters was medieval medicine. Uh, they, there were thought to be four humors or natural juices in the body. Humors or natural juices. And, and each person, and in, th in theory, that is theoretically, each person held a natural slight excess. Like you could carry, uh, you will, or any one individual or any one person would uh, have in himself a little bit of excess of one or any of the humor. And this predetermined or this determined their dominant characteristic or dominant feature medical beliefs uh, you can of course uh, do a simple wikipedia study on humoralism it is not a very it will not be very difficult to understand however if you do find it difficult you can always uh, ask me uh, or present to me your queries Medi medical beliefs such as this humoralism they were also associated with planets and colors uh, so here again there is a complicated uh, scheme uh, that expresses 
the variations or the variousness of the characters within this within it, within its all embracing order so even if you are trying to group together well as in the medieval times group together all of the individuals or of the people uh, on the earth uh, by saying that they are all composed or they are all they are all dominated or controlled uh, by these humors or uh, elements of of the world even then uh, there are variousness there are varieties of excesses varieties of combinations which existed combinations of these humors which existed among human beings and as such even in this all embracing or homogenizing order there were subtle varieties there were subtle heterogeneity for example the wife of bath's portrait in the general prologue describes her in the general prologue to the canterbury tales that is the wife of bath's portrait is de is described as red of hue that is she was of uh, in red in color almost and that were of scarlet red her her clothes were of scarlet red chaucer's audience would immediately recognize this color as signs of sanguine or blood dominated type and would deduce and if if blood is one of the humors uh, in the theory of humoralism and if you are of red in color and wearing a dress of scarlet in color then of course the audience of the contemporary medieval society would very easily recognize this humor to be a characteristic of a, a strong and quick temper but very inconstant very 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 fickle minded and they that they already knew of the typical sanguine character so this this science of a uh, physical science that is physiognomy or reading character from facial features was also related to astrology and medicine so we will find the wife of bath pointing out that she was gap tooth that she had gaps uh, in her teeth uh, among her among her teeth and expected the pilgrims to understand this as a sign of lechery that is lustiness and then referring to a birthmark as the as a seal of venus by way of further astrological proof now venus being a conventional sign of the woman you can already uh, analyze that all of these com combinations that is the humor of blood standing for short temper and inconstancy uh, and inconsistency lecherousness lustiness and also the sign of venus it all amounts to the character of the wife of bath becoming a very unconventional uh, lecherous feminine subject which uh, some of which the broader parts of which i have already uh, explained uh, uh, and posted an essay and explained them in the powerpoint presentation um, the main point to understand now is that the characterization from a medieval point of view was a complicated system evolved to describe the variety between human beings but we must never quite forget that this system relied on a rigid framework of beliefs ultimately religious and moral order and royal and papal authority that is the authority of the pope it bounded or it guided everything the medieval person saw or felt everybody and everything had its own place and we will see that that the wife of bath's place is very carefully defined in these terms and however much we may be tempted in our modern way of thinking to excuse her or even take her side in a modern reading any any you reading a wife of bath tale a uh, wife of bath's character will obviously want to be on her side but you must never ignore that the medieval view of her that chaucer is she is at pains to reveal in her prologue and tale it is the medieval point of view that he pains to reveal because he also believed in that system and the modern way of looking at the world requires less explanation since it is essentially the same attitude that prevails today however there are a few points we need, uh, we can uh, we can bring about in order to contrast between the medieval and the modern world and attitudes first we think about a character our main interest lies in 
what makes that person unique their eccentricities or individuality rather than their classification into types we are fascinated by people's dreams hopes loves and hates and we interpret irrational illogical actions in terms of tension emotional stress or by using modern psychology's idea of the subconscious the details and variants are they, they are not important right now but the main point is that we believe in the value sensitivity and significance of an individual person this contrasts with the medieval point of view which sees the world and all man's concerns as vanity as Troilus, uh, as 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 I quoted uh, a part of Troilus and Crusade, that all he sees from up heaven and when he looks at the earth, all he sees is vanity. This is not a modern point of view that we hold dear, and from that modern point of view, everything else follows from the importance of the individual. We believe that the cleverest and greatest people rise to the highest positions. a hard working man will make a lot of money all through our upbringing we are told it depends on you if you want to be a lawyer a doctor or president go out and do your best it is up to you in this way we underline our belief that the social and moral order of the world is determined by human individuality and in our literary characters we celebrate the inner lives of individuals this is directly opposed to the medieval god centered view and in in seeking to understand and in seeking to understand chaucer we must make an unbiased we must take it is important for us to take an unbiased view of course uh, an unbiased attitude to these opposing philosophies we cannot take the side of either of them we tend to when we tend to we tend to think that a medieval serf that is a medieval slave had no idea of equality it is salutary it is very common to look at the other side of the question as well how many modern young people really can go out to become doctors lawyers and presidents this surely is just as much an illusion a, dream, a, a false dream as the medieval beliefs that serfs were born inferior chaucer's mind was clever enough he was clever enough to see that truth and falsehood in both medieval and modern outlooks and his originality uh, his newness his novelty lies in his ability to blend the elements of both the medieval and the modern worlds and their views together and in this way he creates a complex reality that provokes that provokes us to think that urges us to think and does not give very facile or futile or useless answers to the problems of life it is from this standpoint that sees a much more complicated reality than either a single view could express so if you take any single stance that if you think that you prefer the medieval world order or if you think that you prefer the modern world order we cannot appreciate or we cannot understand the wife of bath's prologue and the tale we have to keep in our mind both the world orders both the views that existed uh, during the during the separated world orders and that is why how we must achieve uh, or, or approach the text as well and as such these were the themes that chaucer or or, or that the text of the wife of bath's prologue and tale explore the first being love and marriage in chaucer's time there was there were there were two predominant ways of re, of uh, viewing relations between the sexes between the male sex and the female sex first the institution of marriage was not confused with romantic feelings as it is now so you may not be in love with a person passionately have have romantic feelings uh, for the person in your heart in order to consider marrying him or her this was this was not a criteria for marriage at that point of time 
it it was uh, it was an unquestioned part of the social and religious order and it was there for social and financial security and for procreation that is for reproduction that is that is for continuance of the human race alison of bath that is the name of the wife of bath alison was <coughs> sorry was first married when she was 12 years old her husband was a rich old man this was an explicit bargain her youth beauty and fertility was traded they were traded for the hus the for the money that the husband brought into the relationship alison's family would also have taken into account that the groom was likely to die of old age quite quickly this is very similar to this is very similar to uh, uh, what would centuries later happen in india as well uh, during the shoti pratha the, the ritual of burning uh, alive the wife whose husband has just died and and the, the the situation this ritual was politicized by the priests particularly uh, of the of the social order who 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 saw it as an opportunity to get the money of the dead husband because the property could not be uh, transferred to a widow uh, and the widow ha- and the, and the ritual was very cunningly destroyed the li- well, well killed the widow so there would be no one to inherit the property whatsoever and and all the money would go to the priests uh, in the temple funds if if i can use that uh, phrase which was not it was not called so at that point of time but now we have a phrase for it the funds for the temple donations charities for the temple and the husbands were usually not just old but very 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 old so this was also the case with alison as it was happening in the 14th century they were they were they were likely to know that the husband is likely to die of old age quite quickly and when he dies alison who is 12 now would be fairly in her youth at that point of time such crass and such well, uh, how should i put it wild trading in young girls as wife slaves would not shock chaucer's audience it was simply part of the accepted order of the society in addition marriage gave the husband almost unlimited power over his wife she was his property to do with as he liked though this could vary according to the power of her family and their ability to protect her so if the family of the wife is rich then she would not be under so much of dominance and uh, atrocity and tortured by the husband if there is a possibility and if you belong to a poor family then your chances of being tortured and dominated time after time it becomes very very your chances become very high and on the other hand the ideas of courtly love had gained some prominence and fashion in chaucer's time it was popularized in courtly romances imported or brought in from france including chaucer's own translation of the romant of the rose or the romance of the rose the courtly lover is a type we recognize more easily in the present day his love for his lady is a kind of adoring worship as in the petrarch and sonnets uh, but we, he feels himself so unworthy that he falls ill and in theory will die in despair if she does not take pity on him if she shows pity he then dares to offer his service and undertakes battles and tasks and duels for her at this stage she may begin to feel that he is worthy and if he shows himself to be loyal and deserving this may kindle her love this may give rise to love in her heart and may make her grant him her favor historians still argue about how much influence courtly love had on day to day manners in medieval times however the supposed courts of love presided over by eleanor of Aqu- aquitaine and marie of champagne in 12th century gained legendary fame and courtly literature spread and grew we can we can distinguish certainly certain uh, with, with certain clear uh, certain clear clarity modern characteristics in courtly love first the individual's emotions are indulged and become more important than life or death second the lover's worship is woman centered she becomes a faultless idol taking the place of god 
This system also contradicts both the man's authority in marriage, for in courtly love the woman has more authority, and its own idealism. Courtly love is a paradoxical, is a very, is a very antithetical idea. For with all the worship and exaltation of womanhood that happens at this stage, worship of womanhood, worship of ideal beauty, the ultimate aim of the lover is to possess and conquer her. And we will we will study more about the conflicts and paradoxes particular in the text particularly now about the other theme that is of the of the gentiles uh, that is the quality of nobility that the wife of path calls gentiles this theme is developed in the wife of path's prologue and tale as a debate as a quarrel between old and new values there is no modern equivalent of the world of the word gentiles but nobility and virtue between them give an idea of its meaning the traditional view was that gentiles was inherited so the more genteel your family the higher you were born in the social scale the greater your nobility and virtue would be this fits the medieval view of an ordered society of course uh, th with social ranks that were, that were so rigid and immovable and passed down through heredity from generations to generations by some divine law. The modern view argued by the old woman in the wife of Bath's tale is that gentiles is a quality of noble goodness that people show by living good lives. She argues that gentiles can be found equally among rich and poor for virtue comes from God, not our parents. Your parents might as well have been criminals in its sense, but you are not bound to be like that. Now, can you can bring about a very, very easy uh, and a very, very popular example in this, as we know about the about the very popular movie of Amitabh Bachchan's Diwar, as it was written on his hand. That your father, Tera Bab Chorhe, that your father is a thief, and that implied to the entire uh, or to the all of the villagers that he is automatically a thief. So you see, there is a paradox in this value. So if your parents were noble and gentle and pure in its sense, then you are bound to be so. And the opposite is also true. If your parents were criminals, then and is antisocial then you are bound to be so now this this leaves no room for improvement this leaves no room for negotiation this leaves no room for a chances of becoming better than what your parents apparently were and Alison or the wife of Bath sees this this paradox she says that gentiles is a matter of your individual virtue and it exists equally among the rich and poor because it is not a it is not some furniture that you can acquire from your grandparents and then from your parents and so on you can see how much democratic that this view is and it fits the attitudes that uh, that i have already discussed and they will be examined in length the, the main thing to remember is that as we begin the study a study of Chaucer is the context of social and religious upheaval in which he wrote. We must seek to understand the medieval worldview as a valid system of established belief and guard against falsifying or, or, or falsifying Chaucer's subtle creation by simplifying or just modernizing his characters and ideas.